Perdón, vamos a tener la oración. Oramos. Nuestro Dios y Señor. Let's pray. Estás en los cielos. Our God. Who are in heaven. En esta hora te invitamos para que sea nuestro huésped tu honor. We would like to invite you to be with us in this hour. Y también para que hables a través del orador en esta tarde. And also that you may speak through the speaker in this evening. Te pedimos también que nuestra respuesta sea proporcional a la tuya. We are also asking you that you help us that our response may be according to yours. Gracias por, por tu paciencia y tu gran misericordia. Thank you for your um, patience with us and your, um, yeah. En el nombre del Señor Jesús lo pedimos. We ask you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, for today, we are going to continue with the topic that started yesterday. Um, just can you give me a minute? There is a technical issue here. Okay, it's resolved. Okay, we are going to make a resume from the topic of yesterday. So yesterday we talked about Matthew 539. 539. And you can read there. Can you see in the webinar? Okay, perfect. So we talk about this verse, and if we are with your Bible, I would like to read with you this verse again. So it says, But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall is mighty on thy right cheek, turn to him to other also. So we saw that the most important word it was the word resist.
This word comes from the Greek four thirty six. And also means resist, support, and withstand. And, and this word we also see that comes from two different words. Um, GC fourth and thirty six. And G twenty fourth seventy six. And these words uh, means um substitute. to um, contrast or opposed. And the words um, 2476 with, with saw that means to the, um, keep firm but can from the word also abide continue and establish when you study the meaning of this word you are going to see more interesting concepts that help us to understand better what exactly wants, wants to tell us. But I, I just going to take these words now. So, we understand that the word resist say that we have to um, have another attitude opposed against the attitude that we are receiving that is can be violence, can be some kind of aggression. And with uh, and this word tell us how we have to to resist. It say we have to abide to stay firm, establish. Um to be established in our foundation. Yesterday, we don't see another word that is important also is the word evil. And this word, when we read that word in, in the dictionary, That word is 4190, is G. That, that word means something hurtful. Um, but that word came from um, a, from the sense like a the in effect of or influence.
Thank you. Um, but also comes from another kind of word like a 25, 60, uh, 56. That this refers to the essence of our character. And also, this is different of this, it's like a contrast. And also we we have another word that's 45, uh, 45 uh, 50. That this come from the original um, virtue. Um, our original virtues. Um, and also mean, means sickness, but especially in the sense of morality. And when we study the this word, we are going to understand the refers to our uh, in the sense of our nature. So the word evil in in this word forty y ninety. Um, also means um, all the bad things, uh, bad situations. Bad things, like a bad things, like a hardship. Mm. Cosas, mal. Also means hardships and harsh harvest. Harvest and also. So when the verse refers to receive, not resist to the evil, means all those kind of situations can affect our character, the essence of our character. And that's influence of the word of, the meaning of the word um, evil, means that we have to resist that influence in our character or the effect. Um, so when we read the context of this verse, we are going to find this story in the um, in the time of the ruling of of Rome when when the people was in slavery in Rome. the people of God. So, um, you know about that, his, that history? And you know, how, how mean was the, the Romans with the people of God, with Israel?
they have a love that they force it to the slaves to share the things for long way. The thing of the soldier or the the Roman people. And in that period of time, the feeling of the people of God, it was um, a cry to, to God listen them to make justice for them. Um, the evil attitude that Roman have with the people of God We have an a spirit of, of claim to God. To claim. For justice. And we can read in the Mountain Blessed. Blessing. Um, in the in the paragraph seventy point one, MV seventy point one. In the first, in this paragraph, say, how was the condition of the people when they claimed to God to ask justice? In the paragraph before, explain how was the how was the treatment that the the people received from the Roman. So, but in this, in this paragraph is the answer of of Jesus to them to that claim. It says, with sadness, Jesus looks into the upturned faces before him. He notes the spirit of revenge that has stemmed in that evil imprint upon them, and knows how bitter the people long for power to crush their oppressors. Mournfully he bites them, he bids them, resist not him that is evil, but whosoever is mind of thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. So we can recognize how um, how Jesus can read in the heart of them. They never express that they want to crush to their oppressor. But this is what Jesus read in their hearts. So we can understand 
For what reason Jesus tell them, don't resist the evil. So I write check, put into him the other also. So we have to understand the context, but because is the the requirement of Jesus is different than we learned on yesterday. We can see the context is a uh, really oppression for them. And we get we see that this built character that the Roman had for them that make or cause or influence to the people of God. That um, that affected the essence of character of of the people. Um, this influence also generate the um, the morality of the people. So for that reason, we can see the counsel of, of God. They have to resist to the evil, not to resist to the evil. So, but now we have, um, we have now a conflict between the original meaning of the word resist and the the context what happened in that spirit. So because one part of this word means that you have to be abide or establish upon the foundation. And that, that foundation is our midnight cry message. So for that reason, we understand that the word don't receive, don't tolerate violence or any kind of aggression. Wonder. Um, but in the context of the of the um, Israel, Jesus says, "Just put your your check." If we read the verse forty in Matthew five. It say, and if any man will shoot thee and the law and take away the coat, let him have thy cloth also. Verse 41. 
And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twine. Give to him that ha asked thee, and from him that will borrow of thee to not go away. If we are going to jump to verse 44, it says, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that, that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which especially use you and persecute you. So, in the context of people of God, God says, you have to bless them. And also ask them to pray for them, to do good things for them. So, in that context, with that kind of violence that the people is suffering, it's hard for them to imagine to blessing that people, do good things for them, pray for them. Because they receive the influence of the character of them. That influence um, changed their heart, their essence of their character. And when they claim to God for justice, In their hearts, there was no desire of justice. It was a Thursday of revenge. They want to crush their oppressor. And that recognized God. Does it recognize God? God recognized the condition of the heart of the people. And they say, don't resist the evil. They doesn't have to receive the bad because they don't have in condition to fight for justice. Because their heart is evil like them. In their heart, there is no love, there is not um, justice. It's just revenge that they want. But this is, is hard for the people to recognize that there is not justice that they want. If you can imagine to that people explain that is suffering, that that people is suffering, explain then 
you have to love them, the people that crush you. Or we can explain them how often in that condition when they just receive bad treatment. It's hard for the people to try to love them. Because they because they just recognize the evil situation and the heart is was painful, it was um hurtful. And they just can see that what they are suffering is unjust. They just can see how they feel, how bad it is for them. Okay, I going to write here the three things that God asks for them to do it with their enemies. Is blessing do good things and pray for them. Okay, now I want to continue reading what Ellen White said about that in the next paragraph that we read is MB 70.2. MB 70.2. It said, those words were but a retiation of the teaching of the Old Testament. It is true that the rule, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, was a provision in the love given to Moses, to Moses. But it was a civil statute. No were justified in having themselves, for they had the words of the Lord. Said, no, though. I will recompense evil. No say, I will do so, do so to him as he had done to me. Rejoice not, the, not when thine enemy falls. If he had hated thee, be hungry, give him bread to eat. If he, if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. So this is a interesting paragraph for me, especially the part when said, but it was a civil statute. What do you mean that is um, a civil statute? That means that it was a law that what happened something in the community, something take out your eye, for example, I'm going to use the same example. You are not permitted to go to take 
the eye of your enemy. You have to take the case to put in the court. Oh, in that cave is the Sandrine. And that has a purpose also. Have a purpose. Tenía un propósito. Um, and when you put your cows or bring your cows to the sun and rain, they have to evaluate the situation. And the idea is that they evaluate the situation from another eye that they are not affected for the damage that received. Because their heart is not, um, is no influence for the, um, for the evil action. So with the period that the January have to evaluate the case before to decide what they are going to do. the person affected have to be calm there. Um, the, uh, the, I don't know, say in English, ira? Huh? The raft, thank you. Um, it, it was a time for the people that was affected can be um, can be um, opposite his anger. So because only when you are not emotion, your emotions are not altered. You, your your sense of uh, your fac your superior faculties can decide properly without influence of your emotions. And you can decide properly for a justice process. So for that reason, we can see in that verse, um, Matthew 5, 39, or the content, why God tell them, resist not the evil. Because if, if God permit today apply justice, they are going to act the same or worse than them. So, 
we are going to go now another verse of the Bible that is Genesis 3. And we are going to um, review the verse 11. Okay, we are going to read the next verse following. Um, it says, and he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree there? Wherefore I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And in the verse 12, it says, And the man said, The woman who thou gave me to be with me, she gave me off of the tree, and I eat it. I did it. Sorry. So, in the verse 12, Adam said, The woman that you give me, Give me it from the tree and I eat. It says she gave me. I want to notice something. In the verse 13, it says, And the Lord and the Lord God say unto the woman, What is that that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did it. So, um, you can recognize in these two verses something different. Both confessions have a different um different information one is in common in common so they blame someone else Aiden blamed to Eve, to God, sorry. And Eve. In, and Eve blamed to the serpent. But in the confession of Eve, she, she recognized something else. She recognized that she was um, deceived. What is the difference in these two confessions? The difference is when she say, be kill me, she not only blame, but she recognized what is their own condition now. She was deceived. And when she says, she is beginning, she recognized that she was very um, ingenious. So, 
But when we go, when we see their answer of God in the next paragraph, in the next verse, um, verse 15. If you can read the translator, you can read for yourself. Will be great. 16, 16, 17. It said, um, and I will put an enmity between thee and the woman, and the woman and between thee seed and her seed, and it shall brise thy head, and thou shalt brise his heel. And and to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrows and thy conception. In sorrows thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy hand, and they shall rule over thee. And and unto Adam he said, Because uh, thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, say, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy shake, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it of the day of thy life. So I forget to verse 14, but it's the verse of the um, sentences against the serpent. So, but we are going to check something in the verse, in the verse 14, 16, and 17. In the verse 14. The verse 14 said, at the serpent, because you did, God start his sentence when he said, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all. There is, that's an important word, because. And only say that words in the sentences of the serpent and in the sentences of Adam, Eden. In this, in the sentences of, of Eve, God directly explained what is going to be their sentence. Her sentence. But why God say when he explained that sentence, why they say because to them? The word because show us that it's an effect of something. If we if we see these three sentences, these three person or three characters, we can see the serpent acts with malicious. if she was beguiled in that situation. And she was very ingenious for that reason offered to her to her and also.
but I don't want to justify to Eve. And also, I think God also doesn't want to do it because that the sentences of three. But when, when the sentences of Eden is because also, because he blamed if and also blame to God. So we can see the act of malicious in that sentence. She doesn't confess like like if. And Ellen White tell us when we read that history that Aidan was very conscious when, when he received the offer of Eve. And also, I don't have to big responsibility to the garden. So for that reason he received um this in his sentences um across for the ground and he had to work a lot of for um sweat for, for get the bread. We can see now in that sentence in the if sentence that one of the the consequence of his action is that she's going to um she's going to i don't know the words sorry um she's going to multiply that sorrows in thy conception And also, it was that she was, she's going to be a ruler for the husband. I love it. So, I'm going to, I'm going to keep that word. That's in, that's, that war rule over that is the the consequence of action of Eve in the next generation we can see that it was totally misunderstanding. So we can recognize if we go to the line of Eden of Eden, Eden to Eden. So which is the first um scene thing that we find in that line? The first thing is the first thing is the first thing is the sexism the second one is the race uh, sorry the second one is the worship and the third one is the race So 
in our line is the same for when we are going to um, sorry no right no race racism and we learn in, in that line that we are going to start to resolve um in a model of um a mirror like a chiasm. And the last um the last test for us is going to be the sexism. So when we saw this the in the verse Matthew five forty one Sorry, 44. When the God acts for them, bless in your enemies, do good thing for them, pray for them. They don't understand how can do that because they they heart is really affected. And when we review the story of, of Genesis chapter 3, and we observe how is the um, uh, how is the process that they have um that they following in the sent to receive their sentences. We notice the difference in the sentences of these two um, characters. And when we read the verse 17, the first part of the sentence of Adam, It say because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of you, of thy wife. So that is one of the reasons that God presents forgive the sentences to him. He listened the voice of his wife and he forget the voice of God. And that get right in the in the verse. So I just mentioned why he why he may focus in that part. Because when he listened the voice of the voice of his wife, he, he show weaknesses. When he show weaknesses, um, he fell and he failed the test. And he commits sin. And I suggest that if in that moment becomes the becomes the uh, test for Eden in that 
moment. Or because um, he listened to her or his voice. Now, I'm not going to take this part of the line because we are study in other studies. But I only going to get focused in that part. When they commit that mistake, God said in the verse, uh, 22 of chapter 3 of Genesis. Genesis 3, verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, let he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and life um, and life forever. In this verse, we can see. Um, we can see that now Adam and Eve, they can recognize the good and the bad. But that in this verse sounds like a, something that is worried to God. Because he said, so now they know the good and the evil. Now we have to be careful that they don't take also the fruit of the tree of life. Um, but doesn't say distinguish, doesn't say they know. And that is different. But the most important in that verse is that they say that it's worry for them. Now we have to take out from the Eden because they know the good and the evil. Why is it too bad to meet the good and the evil? I think the problem is because in the verse says Adam and Eve they are with like us. Why is the problem to be like God? And that is the important of the word no. It's different to distinguish. Because I can make things, but I don't understand what it actually is. I, I can know. Um, but Adam and Eve, the problem is that they cannot distinguish what is good and how looks the good and how looks the evil. Uh, 
and the self image began to grow in them. Because they recognized in the story of um, Matthew 5 that the Romans act evil with them. But they don't recognize their own feelings against them. They only can recognize uh, when the thing is happening with them. So that is, is a problem for God. And for the old humanity. Because if we still read in the Bible, we can see in Genesis 4, the story of the death of Abel. Abel? Um, if we continue to read in the verse, um, in the chapter 6, We can see the story of the people of God, how the evil it was growing between them. And for that reason, um the diluvio um sorry, the flood came from, from them. It, and we can see in the chapter 9, when God destroyed the earth, after destroyed the earth, he made a pact with, with Noah and his son, Ham, abuse of his mom. Um, when he was the naked of of Noah. And when we see the, the chapter 11, we can find the the Tower of Babel of uh, Babel? Babel Tower. Um, I think it's right in Spanish. Okay. Um, we can we can find it, the Tower of Babel. If we are still read in the in the next chapter, we still can see how this evilness was growing in the people of God. It was every time it was get worse and worse. So for that reason, we can recognize that in that part, the consequence of he doesn't hear the voice of God and hear the voice of Eve turning a test for, for Adam in that spirit or for the men in that moment. So in our time, that have the same, the same test for us, which is our test for our generation. Is the feminism.
but it's not any kind of feminism. It's the radical feminism. Because the radical feminism have the objective to get the roof of the problem. So, And that is not a personal issue between Adan and Eve. Because Adan and Eve have a good relation after that. At least what? I think we can see because they have a big family. And the Bible doesn't mention any kind of problem or anything. Um, this is, is a, a political issue because the next generation get affected for that mistake that they committed. But in in the in the context of Matthew five, when the Lord asks for them blessing, do good things, pray for your enemies, it was difficult for the people because they don't they don't understand the concept of blessing or some terms that the God used, like a rule over, for example. They understand, like, a, okay, I'm going to use my power, I'm going to abuse, uh, because I'm a strong, I abuse of the weak people or the little people. This is a, a fight between the strain and the weak. And this test, like a if or like a woman, it was the story of all the Bible we can find story of abuse of the women in that time. All the stories in the Bible try to use the woman to get um, favors. We can see the story of Abraham and Sarah. They just went looking their own protection, not the rest of protection. And when they, when they, how they understand the rule over, the women have to be ruled over by the men. They understand that they have to oppress her. And they do it. In our generation, it's the same. In not only in a subtle way. This is extremely openly they do it, abuse from the woman, and they declare without like a, yeah, this is normal. So the verse 
39 of Matthew 5. It's not the same context that we have now. Uh, therefore, the meaning is not the same. We can uh, put our other check only if our heart is affected, is uh, contaminated, contaminated with their influence. But doesn't mean that I'm going to submit to the oppression. That means that I'm going to try to control my own um, passion, my own lower passion. And I need to learn now more about the radical feminism. Because the feminism, the radical feminism, try to return the equality that God uh, wants in the in the Eden. Restore. Equality. Equality. They try to um they try to put finish to the oppression, to the abuse, to the use of the woman like an object. And that declaration, blessing our enemies, means that I I have to sometimes declare what is my position and don't permit to oppression or tolerate violence. Doesn't mean doesn't mean that I have to compl complacer to pleasure to pleasure my enemies and permit that they do it what they want. I have to to be firm in my position and defend what is my position, what is my right. The word rule over, we also can misunderstand what is the meaning because our model of ruling is totally corrupted what the model of God tried to show us. All our model of government, they are corrupted and they don't reflect the character of God. So we can do good things for them, declaring what is wrong, what they are doing wrong. Because blessing, not always is good things that I like it. Sometimes present in a way that is difficult to understand, but the difference is that always is going to going to finish good.
just for finish my presentation, I want I would like to read um a quote that Ellen White recommend us that is the best way that we can declare our rights in, when we are in situations that aggression or we are forced to defend our rights. And the quote is in Review and Herald, 29th April, 1884. And I noticed that I, I just have translated in Spanish. And just let me a minute to read it. Um, I want to share to my translator one of them. Okay, it says, we do well to examine ourselves to see what kind of a spirit we are fostering. Let us learn to speak kindly and calmly. Um, even in the most difficult circun circumstances, let us control not only our words, but our thoughts, and our imaginations. Let us be kind of courteous. So, I want to finish with that quote um, because it's a reflection for us to to how to how to understand the verse Matthew five um, thirty nine. And we have to practice and examine us all the time how we how we speak, what we feel, how we solve in any kind of situation. Because we are um we are shoving God to the war. And be careful how we use the text of the Bible. Because we give a bad testimony of God for some people. In in another case, with still feeding the bad self or the bad spirit of sexism in the other cases. Because in other cases, we are still feeling the bad self or bad, bad kind of feeling and sexism. Feeding. Alimentamos. In other cases. So, for one people, we give two testimony when we use that verse in a wrong way. We give a testimony of Okay, you can still be sexism. I'm going to 
down my head for you. I'm going to submit submit to you, but the other people, this is you write doesn't count. Our speaking is different. Be careful with us. So um, that is going. I how I going to finish? I will to invite you to pray. Um. Be with me to in your nails. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for all these wonderful lessons that you give us in your right, in your Bible. Please help us to read carefully, to pay attention to every detail that you show us. Because there is a real big treasures in them. Please help us to examine our hearts, our feelings, our thoughts. And we can show you to the world in a correct way. Please purify our corrupt uh, understanding. Show us your way to work. I ask for a blessing for every brethren that is present here. And please be with our elders also in all the mission that they have to fulfill. And we are, thank you for you use them for help us. And thank you for being with us in this presentation. We we pray in the name of Jesus for all these things. Amen. Thank you. Agradecemos a Solana Arauz por su presentación. We thank, we thank Solana Arauz for her presentation. Y por dejarnos ahora más claro la aplicación que tiene para nosotros hoy. And for making it much clearer what the application is for us today. Mateo 5, 39. I'm speaking of Matthew 5, 39. A ustedes, gente querida, les esperamos dentro de 15 minutos. Uh, all of you, dear people, we expect you for our last presentation in 15 minutes. Para que nos acompañen con la última presentación de este día. So that you share with us the last presentation of this day. Bye. Bye bye.